Hey guys, just a bit of a follow up on the um, BMS that I've uh, been working on, which is the design from Stuart Pitway. Um, and just one thing Stuart mentioned to say is that it is going to be transient, so it could change along the line. Um, I think the hardware is fairly dialed in, does what it needs. I think it's more going to be likely to be software changes, but there is the possibility of hardware. So that's one thing he asked me to stress. Um, but I showed the, the the boards briefly last time when I saw it up. Um, I've done a few more. Um, and yeah, got a little bit further. So I thought I'd just take through the first couple of steps that you need to do when you, you, you're you looking at one of these. Um, obviously, this may change, but it's right at the moment. But first, I received a, a package today, um, as you can see here. Um, blanked on my address. Well, you can see I live in Northumberland, but I don't mind that one. Um, and I keep getting wrong for saying, um, so I shall try my best not to. Okay, so I have received, courtesy of Adam Welsh, very kindly, a set of boards, which I wasn't expecting at all, so thank you very much, Adam, it's much appreciated. Um, and also, he has taken the time, ever so kindly, to print me one of the stencils that I mentioned in the last video. Now, I showed the one that um, I printed last time, um, and in all honesty, it didn't come out too fantastic. Um, it is here somewhere, um, here it is. Um, yeah, so I was in a bit of a rush and I pulled off the bed, but um, I'm using a 0.4 nozzle, um, and Adam swapped his out and used a 0.2. Um, and as you can see there, um, it's just the clarity and um, particularly the um, where the chips are um, as opposed to the discrete components uh, that's what's going to make life so much easier um, and you can use it as a proper screen um, and like I showed last time that just fits over your board uh, like that um, your solder mask and then you can just splodge the uh, solar paste on and screen it so I'm going to use that um, to do at least another five boards because I have the two that I showed last time. Um, I've had them working, so I'll bring these two in. Um, so I've this board here. I'll move that out of the way, um, and I have a second board. I can, did put everything to hand, and then I've managed to lose it magically. Let me look. Um, I'm doing it again. I'm saying um. There we go. So this is the the Wii Moss that I used and had more success with. I did try with different boards um, I'm doing it again so yeah do you notice these boards have a solid green light so when you flash these up which you do using the um, if I do that you can see the ICSP header that Stuart's put on there um, a 2x3 so 6 pin connector and what you need to use with that or what I used is the USB ASP connector and then you have adapter down at the six pins um, so I've got a few of these so that's what I used um, if I remember correctly pin one is here it's shown on the board by Stuart so then in case of that connector in there other end in the PC and then if you download the files from GitHub, um, that I'll you know I've placed the links in the previous videos. I'll place them below again. Then what would be a case of taking the cell module, using a device like that, flash it up. Stuart on the code on the very first page, he has put the settings that you need to do. The LTO needs to be set to enabled instead of disabled. And then what you would do is change the the programmer at the bottom to be USB ASP and then you can program that up. 
The only thing that you remember is then when you switch to flashing your ASP, you need to change the settings for the relevant ASP. So I'll not go into in depth and flashing up an Arduino unless people want to, and then I can I can look at doing that. So once you flash those boards up, by default, as I mentioned, you've got the solid green light, and that is what's called factory mode. That's that's um, configured, um, which is as I suggest if it was a product as in out of the box then what you will end up with by what we'd need to do is then flash up your controller now I tried with an old MCU and I had no luck I tried with a Wemos and I had no luck one thing I did find I needed to do was make a, a change in the code um, which was a um, set clock stretch I need to change that to 1500 and I needed to place that command after the wired up again statement now that just worked for me um, and then once I made that change it worked with the Wemos that I was testing at the time and it also made that when I switched back to the Node MCU it worked with that as well I tried various pull ups and other things um, but there was just it just didn't work so I, I think the Wemos has got internal pull ups and that's what I was relying on and once I made those changes that worked fine I'm waiting on others to test it um, I know Adam Welch is looking at this as well and um, a few other people have started ordering the parts up so it'll be interesting to see how they fit I'm not sure if it's something I've done or, or, or similar so it'll be very interesting to find out so what happens is when you the, there's two sets of code for the controller Stuart's done a, a test module which is great and it actually you just need to open a, a console to it um, a, a serial console from within the um, Arduino software and that presents a menu and then you can send commands so you can do X to search for anything on the I2C bus such like what I have found is that a tool if you manage to get one of the modules confused it's handy just to flash up an ESP with what that code and then you can go through the menus in even if you do X and scan it and it doesn't select the addresses start from 24 so you can erase those addresses um, so what you'll do is um, you'd have your for myself I'm going to use the, the Wemos D1 Mini which is great and um, I'm going to power that off a just a USB power bank for now then what you will have to do um, this is something I had to figure out is this is working as an access point initially so rather than screen capture I'm just going to show so what you do is find your Wi-Fi and then there'll be a, a wireless network which is DIY BMS controller so if you select that, you'll join that. It's just got an exclamation mark because there's no access to the internet. If you then fire a web browser, what you need to do is you need to go to the address 192.168.4.1. And what will happen is it's a, I wouldn't say quite a captive portal, but um, a, this setup page, which you can then, from a drop down, select the network you're on put your password in so if I do submit on that it said the wireless settings have been saved will reboot in a few seconds so that will go through and basically reconfigure the Wi-Fi with the SSD SSID and the password that you've selected um, reboot the device and so then what you I've switched to the PC um, and I've set up a webcam so first time I've done this so hopefully it comes across okay um, so as I mentioned earlier um, once you've flashed up the device um, and we went through the configuration steps that I showed um, one issue I did run into was that on the tablet that I demonstrated the configuration of the SSID and the wireless network once I'd done that I couldn't actually reach it from the tablet um, tried lots of different browsers and that just didn't seem to function so what I've done is I've switched the PC but it makes it a bit clearer and, and such like anyway so as mentioned we've still got our same two boards green LED showing which means they are in factory state this is the internet connect cable which will go between the two boards so what we're going to do is we've got the same we must D1 which is flashed with the software which is the the BMS controller not the test from the github so you can choose either of these two pins here so 
we'll just pick this first one. And then in the software, if we go to modules, we can click provision. See as it's provisioned. Do that. If we cancel and we come back. And there you go, straight away we can see a module. So then what you need to do is plug in the second board. And we need to go back to modules and provision. And if we OK that. Yeah, we'll see two modules. Um, it's got itself in a tizzy again. There you go. So it's got a decent reading. Okay. If we go to modules, so we can see the two modules. For example, I just put a similar voltage in there. And you'll notice, as I mentioned, you've got the module ID 24, and then you've got the module ID 25. And then it would be a case of going through if you had more of these boards and connecting them in and you're just going to daisy chain the boards along and that should get you the connectivity that you require and then go back modules and then we're now getting some meaningful readings for both the temperature and the voltage. Occasionally it is spiking up so I think there's some selection and averaging to be done there potentially but on the whole getting some data in um, and then the next step for me is to start on the Grafana side of things and I know Stuart is looking at the actual balancing part of it which I will then need a solder on a um, power resistor on this section yet I haven't put one on yet I'm not sure if you use the ones I've already got or to get some a different resistor so I'm going to look into that but for now it would be great just to get the monitoring side of things working the hardware as I mentioned I don't think it's really going to have to change but we'll we'll see going forward um, so yeah so that's where we're at at the moment cheers guys so I hope you found it useful um, I'll be doing some more videos the if anyone wants to see using the stencil that I showed earlier on that Adam sent me just let me know if there's anything else you want to know about this and I'll just be doing an ongoing videos I'll show the Grafana thing next and then we'll just see where we can take it from there cheers guys feel free to like subscribe Thanks very much.